thinking as Pat, as Patrick spoke this morning, Jesus was talking about the kingdom and how the sowing of the seed leads to the kingdom when it falls in good hearts and it reproduces. And uh, Jesus taught a lot about the coming kingdom and the attributes of the kingdom. Paul then came along and also taught about the kingdom, but some very practical concerns. Jesus' teachings were practical about what's in the heart, how we treat one another, motivations. Paul, as we read in Timothy, talks about, well, how does it look every day in practice when you come to church on Sundays? How does it look? And so we've been talking about that. And specifically in chapter three, we've been talking about uh, how is the church run? It has elders as overseers, it has deacons as servants, or some churches call them servant leaders, because leadership can come from anyone. Mm -hmm. And a sense elders are leaders, but often a lot of the ideas that get implemented don't come from the elders, they come from the preacher, they come from members, they come from deacons, they come from teachers, so lots of people have ideas and get programs going. And so leadership can come from a lot of different sources. Uh, but we were talking about uh, elders. We had a lot of conversation about that last week from different perspectives. We, have, we, we look at it one way in the United States, maybe a little bit different down south than we do up north. We look at it differently in Africa and probably India and uh, Honduras, wherever you might happen to be, it's viewed a little bit differently. And we then got, we're beginning to talk about deacons as servants of the church. And Paul lists some qualifications for deacons in chapter three of his first letter to Timothy. And many of those qualifications are the same as those for elders. Deacons are to be men who have been tested and uh, are not newcomers. And, um, oh, what struck me in that, unless maybe you have some comments, but what struck me especially was verse 13. <clears throat> well, not, that's the watch. Let's read down further. Verse, yeah, verse 13. I'm sorry. A deacon must be the husband of but one wife and must manage his children. Verse 13, First Timothy 3. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. Kind of an interesting statement. The old translation says, they gain an excellent standing and great boldness in their faith in Christ Jesus. How does that work? How does being a deacon uh, accomplish those things? You get an excellent standing and great assurance or great boldness. I think about Stephen. Wasn't he a deacon? And he certainly was bold to the end. Okay. We read about we, what we think were the first deacons or servants of the church. They were, they were called out by the congregation. The apostles said, congregation, you find some men. They weren't appointed from above. And uh, Stephen and two of the seven. Stephen and Philip are known to have been preachers as well as deacons. So they didn't just handle the food for the Grecian widows. 
they were involved in that thing. And Stephen lost his life as a result of his activities. But what struck me is if you do something in the Lord's church, no matter what it is, you're going to gain uh, a great confidence in God because you're going to see him bless those efforts in those activities and your faith is going to increase and you're going to have a greater assurance in talking to others about Christ and great boldness in talking about the goodness and providence of God. God could kind of, I guess, zap us with all kinds of blessings, but most often he wants us to do something in the time of Israel, he gave them some great victories, but they didn't just sit home. They had to be out in the field doing. And, and that's the way it is in the church. If we want to grow in our faith, we can read the Bible, we can pray, but one of the things we need to add to that, or more, thing, more than one thing, is doing. Get active in some ministry, whether it be the pantry, uh, whether it be visitation, be active and then your faith is going to grow. And deacons have a special uh, opportunity because so often they're appointed over a specific work. You're the deacon in charge of education. You gotta get teachers. You're the deacon in charge of getting guys up in front in, in, on a Sunday morning. That was and that, we, that used to be a difficult job yeah. because people, when those guys came around, people hid. I know. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> I know. Every time. Uh, Alan, yes. uh, when I was uh, in Georgia, living here, and they would give us um, uh, letters to to the congregation. Okay. And they would have maybe like a, a dozen men that they want to uh, to take that position. Okay. As deacon. And what they would do, they would uh, list uh, qualifications and different stuff like that. Okay. And they, what they would do is have us to examine each one of those right. men and like I guess if we knew that they weren't um, you know uh, shouldn't be getting this high standard mm -hmm. you know because of things that they've been yeah, doing yeah. in the neighborhood or whatever mm -hmm. gossip or whatever and um, after we would do that we turn these letters back in and then they would choose from one of the you know the letters the, the elders would read over yeah. and you would have to choose that person that you felt was qualified for the job. So you kind of vote. Right, in a sense, yeah. yeah. And that's how they were chosen. Okay. And they were always uh, family men, um, you know, wife and children, and uh, 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 been at the church for a good while, and, and, and it worked, you know. So that's the way they were chosen. Each church probably does it a little differently. Uh, here we usually, if a man seems like he would be qualified as a deacon, we put his name before the congregation and say, is there any reason why he shouldn't serve? Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, then if there isn't, then he's a formally appointed. Has there ever been a time when somebody said, no, that was not the one? And then <laughs> what? Okay. We have had situations where names have been withdrawn. You had situations where the elders felt like he might be a good candidate, but the person didn't want him? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not exactly what, I mean, the elders um, have had, had uh, ministers leave, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. 
Why couldn't take the black eye? That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about elders last week, and they're chosen in different ways. I think uh, in Africa, the evangelist kind of appoints elders in some situations. Is that all? Well, I mean, the evangelist is big. Every church, I think that every congregation, the evangelist is the one who appointed elders. God, if the evangelist is there, he strives that people see their behavior and everything. It's yeah. because it's a mandate to evangelize. As the book of Timothy after Titus, the address that is there, it's been Paul is telling Timothy to do that kind of things yeah. because when he have to scrutinize the people to see, I mean, how their behavior and it's like the way uh, our mom was saying, you know, it's also another part of it. And one way, like the way you were saying to putting the fellow's name, in, I mean, before the whole conversation, yeah. if somebody has anything about him yeah. not to qualify him, should contact the preacher. So that this person, okay. I don't have, I have a problem with you. And then sometimes you do, the preacher do send some men or your fellow women to your house sometimes. They will come like a visitor, so uh -huh. they will come to the area. Those go through your list before. So pointing an elder and the, this thing at Africa, if the preacher is there, it's not easy job at all. Yeah. It's not easy. And one thing I was pointing out last Sunday was uh, formally when we go through the scripture, we see that when we see the word overseas, <laughs> we think after the appointing the elders, then the elders oversee mm -hmm. every affair. Mm -hmm. Then when you get to the titles, you see that ah, the elder oversees affair. Yes, but so if the preacher is there, the preacher has the right to control things. Okay. The preacher has the right to control things. Formally, there wasn't enough preachers. That's the reason why when the church starts, you have to try your best to appoint what? The elders to oversee the affairs. Right. Yeah. Because the book of Timothy, was addressed directly to Timothy. The book of Timothy was telling Timothy the warning, how he should stand strong. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't look himself as so long, or he shouldn't let himself down for people to talk about him, just this thing, because he has mandated to a certain work that he's supposed to do. He should stand strong in the Lord, in the faith, he said, and then at the same time, the book was telling Timothy the behaviors. You have to have this behavior. We are going, as we are going ahead, I think we will meet that. But Africa formally meeting that, when you point the elders, then the preacher, you don't need again. You are not needing that. You have to move to another place to establish another church. You see? But it's somehow not, Paul is not, that's not what Paul was saying. Rather, the elders have to help the preacher. <clears throat> if they want to establish a church in another place, the elders have to help the preacher to go establish another church. Right. To oh, go establish another church. Yeah. 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 In preacher. Africa, the thing came to us, the time the thing came to us, we rise up and grab it this way. So when we appoint the elders, normally within a few, within a year, then you see that it start coming. The elders will say that you, the preacher, now you have to go to somewhere else. We don't need you again. Very yeah. trouble. That's very, right. very trouble. That's right. I got it. What I'm going to say is uh, in some churches, elders are elected by secret ballot. The church I visited in Fort Worth for a number of years. That's the way they do it. And they, yeah, they have so many men that are qualified that they uh, 
restrict the elders to 15 men. <laughs> mm. They are elected for three-year terms. And at the end of three years, they elect another 15 men. So that's a blessing. No, to, two, no two terms? No, not no. in a row. I mean, uh, in a certain yeah. special circumstance, they could do that, but <laughs> generally not. You're in for three years, then you're out for three oh, years. Three years, then you are out. Yeah. Then another group comes. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a church, it's about 1,100 regular members and uh, oh. more <laughs> on Sundays. Yeah. So, they have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of different. Uh, so, I, we were talking last Sunday after class that uh, I view the eldership in a sense as a functional group. It, as the model that might come to mind for the early church would be Israel. And how was Israel run in uh, <clears throat> biblical times? Well, they were run by the Romans, which they didn't like. But the towns and villages were generally and probably informally run by a group of old guys that sat by the gates. And we read about that in the Old Testament, how the, you know, they, they said about it, they made decisions as to what was going to happen in that village. And how did you get, they didn't have an election. It was, you know, if somebody was kind of a mature man who, you know, uh, was deemed to have some wisdom, he got to sit with the others at the gate and help make decisions. And I've always thought, well, maybe the eldership is kind of like that. It's a functioning group. Uh, anyway, with, with less, we're in an age of formality with elections, <laughs> all that kind of structure. Things are a little less structured. Yeah, we call a board of elders. Well, yeah. like with a company. It's a little different. Sharing a board. You know? It's a little different than a board of <clears throat> trustees. Anyway, any any other comments on elders and deacons? We can, we can move Let's on. See what, what's the difference between elder and deacon? Somebody asked that question two weeks ago. It's a, well, it's a, it's a, just the, the word elder is the, the words that are used are pastor or shepherd overseer here word from the Greek that's translated bishop <laughs> it's an elder deacon is the word for servant servant of the church so there's not necessarily but in a sense deacons have responsibilities and uh, in a sense are leaders that usually so it's a, is it the um, elders or deacons that make like shepherd call different stuff like that? You mean call on people? Yeah. Yes. Well, both can do that. I mean, uh, some churches have uh, deacons in charge of visitation. Okay. Uh, and they organize people to call other people. But as, as overseers, uh, the scriptures say the elders are responsible for the souls of people. You, you better be in contact with some people and trying to help them. Because I remember when, um, <coughs> before Patrick was um, elder, he visited me when I was. Well, sure. Elder. Yeah. And then um, Greg and Esther. Mm -hmm. Um, what, uh, when I had the, uh, the second okay. back surgery, um, came and um, well, communion on Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember a thing with you that the elders did a few years ago where you had a um, thing where you visited every yeah, member. We tried to. You, two of you went to their <clears> home <throat> just. Talked and I think trying to make sure that everybody felt seen and yeah. you know that you had concern and, and just you know to make sure that everything was was okay and uh, I don't remember that was 
years ago. Years ago. Yeah. 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 When Daryl was oh, here. Yeah. Your brother should do that again. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, then people don't feel like they're yeah. falling through the cracks yeah. or something. Yeah. Make sure that everyone feels that you that you uh, have them in mind. Not you ask whether people have any ideas or suggestions. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. We split up in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's. Uh, I think to see God's wisdom here though, and developing this role of elder, right? But the one thing the, the church can do is ask your people, right? Well, government can't do that. Right. And it comes up with good programs that would try to help people, like helping the asylum uh, seekers. It's a good program. It's not perfect. It can do, you know, a lot of other good government programs, but the government can't pastor like the elders can or a minister, and the church can. So that's, I think, why he set that up. You know, right. We, we yeah. have to have something unique about the church. It makes it special, and that's one thing yeah. that makes us stand out among other organizations and then hundreds, thousands of organizations out there in the world, right? Everything A to Z, but yeah. the church is unique that way. Well, Ellen, the uh, asylum seekers, do they get an invite? The what now? An uh, invite to come. Does who get it? Asylum seekers. Oh, well, uh, one of the families has been here because uh, they're members of the church. Uh, uh, okay, I mean, but I'm, I'm saying those that are not. Do they get an invite? Renee, Carl's are over there. I haven't been to directly there, but, but I don't think they can just get up and go to church. No, because they're uh, when they're in a yeah. shelter, they have to stay there. You know, they have limited. Oh. They go out maybe oh, out in the lawn or something, but they cannot just go off to church or something. Oh. You know, they don't have that freedom. Like well, they, they they can go, but they have to. Uh, I think yeah, they have to let people know, so you know the authority know where they're going, and I think they have more limited. Yeah, they have to be back by a certain time. Right. Right. Places like Pacific Garden Mission, where they monitor where they are. Yeah. They don't do that. I don't know. I don't think they do that. No. And I think they also, um, Linda, I, the people who go there to bring donations and things, mm -hmm. I don't think they're allowed to go inside. Oh, well, they got, I think they just drop it off. off. Okay. Um, and then it depends on the I'm not quite sure how it works, whether the people have to come out mm -hmm. and get things. It, it gets rather complicated because um, like my sister said, sometimes you know somebody will come up with donations mm -hmm. and the people uh, they they take some people take more than they really need kind of like they're hoarding stuff mm -hmm. and so uh they've had to put limits on things and, and you know, because they need to control yes, how right. yeah, yeah. 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 she's a cafeteria of salvation army well even people like from church here you know no, I meant your sister. No, she's with a different. No, no, no. She she was uh, working with the with um, people who are um, uh, helping over at Wright College. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So she was telling me about some of the problems that they had because of you know people bringing donations and then people just kind of descending on it. Let me get mine and all that. So yeah, yeah they, they had to think about it. Well, they came with nothing, you know. Yeah. So they, and there's always some security in things, right? Mm -hmm. Just your clothes you wear, that gives you some security. And then any possessions you have, and they got a little of nothing. So in fact, they, they have to limit in. how much people can bring because they oh. just don't have the space. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah they're definitely right. It, it's a little complicated. So I don't, and I suppose, though, if you know somebody goes and you know they have people out, they can invite them to church. But like I say, they can't go in and talk. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, okay. But we have members who are over there that yeah. they can. Yeah. That's the way to do it. And <laughs> yeah. they have the language. They yeah, probably uh, that's that's the other yeah. Thing. speak right. the language. Probably. So 
you mean we have members among those, uh, I mean, the asylum seekers? Yes. Our members? A family. Where they can group and worship by themselves. They have been Muslim? here, yeah. They're yeah, from Venezuela. Yeah, yeah I know. Like you are saying, as mom was saying, that it's very complicated to get yeah. in there. And so, I mean, is it possible that they can group as a family and worship on Sunday? And then said, is it allowed? Things like that. Then, then I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> We'd have to talk I to Carlos. When I was down south, um, the uh, young men and women that went off to college, especially the, the guys, really. Okay. And it would be like four or five of them, you know, in this one uh, group hall or whatever. They, 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 had, they had church every Sunday. Oh, well, that, I yeah. suppose they could have a church. At Wright College, if they... Not the college change. No, not I mean the entire college, but the ones that is involved with the Church of Christ. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that's one of the things that the parents and the elders and the deacons <laughs> saw that these young people, when they had to go off to college, for them to continue, if it wasn't a church in that area, then those guys got together Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah, that's what we should be doing. Maybe we need to figure out a way to do more for these people. Yeah, that are going off and, you know what I mean? Just fall away. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of complicated. They're doing a temporary situation. Yeah. Right. Just for the summer. As soon as school starts out, they got to move them out. And I think they're going to end up on the south side somewhere. somewhere. So that, I don't know how they put the plans. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the lately, the there are, evidently, are more people coming mm -hmm. up. They're sending more people up the to the south because over at the 16th District Police Station, they've been having like more than 30 people oh, staying in the police station until they can find places to yeah. uh, put them more. Even again, it's still temporary, but at least better than the police. What is that? Like in the jail? I mean, no, like the real <laughs> state. I'm just they have a part of the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, it's not in the jail. So well, I'm yeah, talking about sleep. They I'm have a imagine. part of the lobby that's court. I mean, like you come to work and you got people laying on the floor all over the place. Oh. You know, and, and you're trying to work at your sure. desk, you know. It's a difficult situation yeah. for the police. <laughs> Now, the people appreciate it because they got a lot of protection, you know. They don't have to worry about somebody coming in here with a gun and shoot them. Well, they, but, I so they don't. Have any any they, I know, that's right. They appreciate that. Yeah. No, no that's that's it. <laughs> They'll sleep on the floor glass. Yeah. You know, yeah. that. Keep away from uh, the bank Well, there have been families over there at the 16th. I don't know about single women, but. Okay, because I mean, it's not. They, I mean, it just shouldn't be. No, no, no. somebody yeah. thinks the refugees are running loose and robbing, stealing, and you know, raping and murdering. And they are being robbed and raped. I think it's way overblown. But you're right. That's, there's opportunity there. There's got to be opportunity for the church. When people are in a transition, then they're more open right. to the gospel. Linda, this is kind of related to your question, the question you originally asked. Um, I do know that in the food pantry, um, we want to receive food from the Greater Chicago Food Depository, which I mean, that's the vast majority of our food. There are regulations we have to follow. We can't, um, for example, we can't say, well, let's, uh, um, you know, come to uh, this, you know, this worship service or this Bible class, and at the end of it, we'll give you food. Yeah. We can't. We're not, we're not allowed to do that, and uh, um, we're, we're not allowed to to imply or outright say that um, receiving food is contingent on attending religious activities. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we can invite people to worship service, and we have done that many times, and you know, a lot of. You know, people who come a couple weeks and, you know, some of our long-time members, uh, you know, first learned with us through food pantry. Um, but, you know, there are, and rightly so, there are restrictions on how um, we're, we're supposed to do that. And you can't, um, 
you can't force people, you know, into it by um, only giving them food. Okay. Now, that's another example of a good organization, but they can't pass them. So, we just feed them. And that's it. Uh, we can invite them to church and pray, offer to pray for them. And that's it. Well, that's uh, something that we uh, could add to our prayers is for wisdom to know how best to reach out to people in that situation because uh, as we've heard so many times, Jesus is especially concerned about the poor and lowly. And uh, there's opportunity there. Sometimes that's the first step is meeting people's needs. Yeah. And then uh, you never know what what's going to happen. But that, that's how we got involved because of the family from Venezuela. They were at our church picnic uh, that we had oh, a few weeks really? ago. And that's oh. how we got introduced to this and how this whole ministry started, really. Because they got in touch with Carlos and looked up the church here. Were they converted in Mexico on their route or something? I don't uh, what they said. Maybe that was it. Imagine a lot of people from Venezuela are Catholic. Yes, I would imagine most of all those countries. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's yeah. We need to pray hard for those uh, situations and for the opportunities for the gospel. I think there will be opportunities for all the immigrants coming up here. We already have over forty thousand new people in the city of Chicago, yeah. and some of those are founded. You know, filter into the church. Yeah. A lot of them are going to stay. They're going to make a life here. They don't want to go back. Yeah. They don't want to go anywhere else. They don't know where else to go. So uh, some of them will, will filter out, but uh, most of them are going to stay here. So that's one way to, to grow our population, which we need. <laughs> We've been losing people, right? South, most of them moved down to Texas. I don't know why. Not that many. But that's it is where they go. <laughs> and, uh, and other places, Houston and stuff like that. But I think there's going to be an opportunity. Some of them will end up in the church. Uh, yeah, I hope so. If we reach out to them, well, it'll be a blessing, I think, for us. Anyway. I think the southern states should absorb some of these people instead of busting them all up here. I mean, that's fine to send some up here, but we just slow the buses or planes or whatever. That's all politics. Yeah, it's politics. You have to be above the politics, the prey of politics. I think Jesus is above that. The church is. You have to live in it too. Has spiritual objectives, not political objectives. Anyway, ah, well, we'll finish this chapter anyway while we're. Although I hope to come to you soon, Paul writes in verse 14, I'm writing you these instructions so that if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church. Kind of an interesting way to describe it, God's household. Uh, it's this God's house, right? He well, owns it, right? I mean, you, the trustees have our name on the title. Oh, no. The household is people. Ultimate. It's, yeah, it's not you just a building. Uh, God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. And that struck me. You know, we take it for, what does that mean? The church is the pillar and foundation of the truth. That's the way the truth is disseminated to a great degree. Um, that's where people are strengthened. It, today, it seems there's a lot of people who will say, well, I'm religious or, or even I'm a Christian, but I'm not part of any church. Big mistake. Big mistake. That's what that, this verse they don't know suggests how to, to me that we need one another in the church. We may think that we can do it all by ourselves, but we can't. We need to learn from one another, strengthen one another. Uh, and that's what we need to do 
more with and for one another as part of the church. And uh, we meet on Sunday, that's good. We meet, we meet on Wednesday, that's good. We, it'd be nice if we could meet more. And we meet for classes. And sometimes I think, you know, the most important part of the class or the service are the conversations that take place before and after. Because that's where we really get into other people's lives and encourage. And another uh, area where I think there's a lot of strength to be had is if, yeah, and we have class, that's great. If we work together on a project, whether it be putting stuff in shoeboxes, handing out food, putting the food in bags, uh, we need more of that where we work together for the good of other people. Uh, there's a lot there. Yeah, there, there's a lot of conversation. There's encouragement. <laughs> I'll just get back to the shoeboxes. We see people who come to for the shoeboxes that you don't see too much. <laughs> for some reason, that draws interest. People like it because it's easy to do. Yeah. Cheap. <laughs> and it's so it's something good. You feel like it's something, yeah. You're accomplishing you something. something you don't know. And that's kind of yeah. what I think. Yeah. But the, I think there's a lot of people, uh, and maybe we're in this room, but uh, in that church, that would be interested in getting together and doing more. And that's, I know it's up to the eldership to come up with stuff like that. But. Uh, you guys don't always have stuff. Okay. We feel ideas from the congregation. Yeah, sure. So why we get sure. But it's up to us to kind of initiate things. So sometimes it just it's uh, all rolling, you know. Strikes me that that is an opportunity to strengthen the church. Maybe get some people. You know, there are people who come to do something like that. They won't come to a class or worship service. That's true. But they'll come to distribute food or do something like that. Or, uh, you know, have a pantry or a clothes place. Or... Anyway, it's so, that's... it's so concrete. You're giving something. You're giving <laughs> of yourself and something. That That's what came to my mind that when I read that the church. The women in the church. That's something that we can do. You know? Women are a big part of it. <laughs> that's <laughs> maybe the biggest part. Yeah. But to me, that's what came to mind when I heard that, read the church is the pillar and foundation of the truth. So, beyond all question. Excuse me, buddy. Is it possible someone who would say that I'm a Christian, but I don't belong to any church? How true Christian, how true is it? Well, you're once, if you become a Christian, you're added to the body that we're told. It's the Lord adds you to the church. That's it. And you have a responsibility to act as part of a church. So they don't understand that. So if somebody say, I'm a Christian, I don't belong to any church. You don't they, understand. I think you don't understand. So that, that means you don't, I don't think you are on the truth path of yourself. Right. Right. We better invite those people. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> you know, ask Hebrew 10, 25. Mm -hmm. Even he is talking to his own colleague, the Hebrews, but still, because the behavior of not, some of them not meeting the church, absenteeism, this kind of things, yeah. that's how he's warning them about. So it's very important to, I mean, associate yourself with the church oh, yeah. always. Well, if, that's if, you, the if you don't, you're kind of ignoring some of the things that Paul uh, writes about. Yeah. He says, you know, don't forsake the assembly. Build each other up. You, yeah, know, you yes. don't have people that, to associate with, then you're not really doing some of the things that yeah. Paul, yeah. you know, writes is this part of being a Christian. It's like uh, certain um, people they they have been baptized, and for whatever reason, they just leave the church. And they feel as though I can do this on my own. I, I still believe. 
I can read my Bible, I can do this, I can do that. But, like you said, um, we should be one body, and it's, you know, the whole, the yeah. whole of us, you know, should, should be in church. But it's not, not you can't people. grow up because you, you don't measure yourself by it. So. They just fall away. <laughs> And so those are the ones that walk around for the line Christian. Christian says to be a Christian because they were baptized. They just no longer come to church. That's if you're baptized, then you back you are baptized, then you are out of the body. Yes. I think so. Yes. You know, stay stand. Right. But let's let's finish this chapter. <laughs> One more mention. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. And then there's a, a couple of uh, there are verse here that appears in the form of poetry in most of our versions, probably because that was the words of a hymn or a, a poem or something that they recited. But it talks about Jesus. He appeared in a body was vindicated by the spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in glory. That's kind of the story of Jesus in six lines of poetry, if you will. That's a good preaching book. Yeah. <laughs> we could, just thinking really. And we can talk about each one of those and like you say, preach a sermon on each one of those about Jesus. And we need to talk more about Jesus. Mm, yeah. But that's that's the way that Paul kind of concludes that thought. Um, Jesus in a um, human form. Yeah. Yet his incarnation. Um, his resurrection. Yeah. Taking up his glory. Yeah. So anyway, that's we'll, we'll stop there for, for the weekend. Uh, if you have any more thoughts on that, 